Hey buddy, how you doing? You enjoying the snow? Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. You guys are crazy. You got a good stick. <laughs> so loud. All right, well, this has been a while since I've done an update, but sorry about that. School happened. Uh, pretty much over now. I have one more exam, but I'm not too worried about it. The sheep are yelling at me because they're hungry. But today, I figured we could talk fencing. Because that's really important for when you have sheep. I swear one day I'll remember to bring scissors to cut these bales open. Hey, buddy. For now, I use these. It does the job. It's a little bit messy, but it gets her done. I'm a little bit sick, by the way, so that's why I sound funny. Oh, yeah. I give him a little bit of hay every day. This hay keeps them warm throughout the winter. It's not that cold today, but it's still important. But, yeah. Um... What can I tell you? So there's two main different kinds of fencing. One is physical, which is what I use. Physical barriers. And the other is psychological barriers. So we're going to talk about both of them and what the options for those look like. Hi, right, ladies. All right, so pros of physical fencing. Uh, well, first of all, you can make it as big as you want, really. Um, whatever you can afford is great. Um, you can make it as tall, and you can, like, put it right down into the ground so nothing can dig under. There's some really good benefits for that, so it keeps the sheep in, keeps predators out, and it's, uh, you don't really have to worry about plugging it in. It's going to stay wherever you put it. Um, you do have to do some repairs here and there, but generally speaking, your fencing, once it's in the, once it's there where you want it, it's not going anywhere. How's it going? Hi! Wow, you're coming right up to me. This is nice. You never do that. So anyway, um, there is a bit of an upfront cost, but the maintenance for it afterwards is generally not too bad. And like I said, you can make it as big as you want. So this is great for what we have. This is probably way more room than two sheep need, but I'd like to get more at some point, so this is fine. Um, downsides to physical fencing is generally it's not that movable, unless you've got something like my mobile pen that I made. Um, so most fencing doesn't come on wheels. Hi! What are you doing? So it's kind of wherever you build it is where it's going to be. Um, which can have some downsides because sheep have parasites and part of parasite management is being able to move them to a spot where they haven't pooped before, or at least not recently. So that is a downside to it for sure. But, uh, if that's, if that works for you, if you've got lots of different areas that you can build fence like we have, so we've got this one here, that one there, that one there, plus the mobile one. Physical fencing works great. Um, you know, it works against coyotes, wolves, dogs, bears. You guys, don't headbutt me, please. Wow, look at this. You're right up here. This is really nice. You've never been this friendly before, unless I've had food. So yeah, that is physical fencing. And it can be made of whatever material you want. Like, we use wooden posts with metal wire or two by fours, like my mobile one on wheels with, again, metal wire. Um, you can use bricks, you can use full metal, you can use just straight wood, whatever works for you. There's, the sky's kind of the limit there. As long as it works to keep predators out and sheep in, then you're, you're dandy. Um, biggest thing I would say is make sure your fencing is not made of copper, because that is really bad for sheep in case they do decide to chew on it, but hasn't really been an issue for us. Yeah, that's physical fencing. So your psychological fencing is your electric fencing. And again, there's options for what you want for electric fencing. Watch out, guys. And that can is usually some sort of um, battery charged or solar powered um, energizer. 
and those vary in cost quite a bit. And either tape that's electrified or netting that's electrified. Um, there's a few good sides to electric fencing, and that is that it is fairly mobile. So if you don't have big pastures set up like we do, um, it's really great because you can set it up and take it down whenever you want in whatever shape or area you want. So it's really great for rotating pasture. Um, downsides are that you do have to have a working energizer because if you don't, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Um, that can be a problem for, you know, if something comes unplugged or if your battery is dead or all sorts of other issues. So um, that's just something to be aware of if you want to go that route. Um, I would recommend as well, if you're using tape, to have one at about cheap nose level because that will mostly be the deterrent. If it shocks them on their wool, it may work. But generally speaking, like, look how thick their wool is. They're not going to feel it too much. So you want it at nose level where they're going to feel the shock and remember, like, this sucks, let's not do it again. So that works really well for a lot of people. Um, again, there's an upfront cost, and depending on how often you have to replace things or how much uh, netting or tape you need, that can determine how much it's going to cost. But uh, really, if you don't have a ton of space, it is a really good option, um, especially for, like, homesteaders and stuff. So, yeah, we have 161 acres. Most of it has cows on it for the summer, but um, we do have quite a bit of space for sheep as well. So, personally, I prefer physical, but you know what? It's There's no right answer with this stuff. It depends on what works for you. So, yeah, that's fencing. Um, again, this is just, like, really scraping the surface of this. There's a lot to know with this stuff, um, and whatever works for you is what works best for your sheep. As long as it keeps them safe and secure, and it's a good fence. That's really all you need to know. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit of learning to do. Um, I have lots of plans for different sheep tools and supplies and equipment that you need if you're going to raise sheep. Um, if you learned something, let me know. If there's something I missed or got wrong, let me know in the comments below. And uh, let me know what else you want to hear about. Don't forget to like, subscribe. <laughs> And we'll see you next time.